Our second lesson is from Paul's letter to the Colossian Christians. This will serve as the basis for our devotion a little later on this morning. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that, everything he, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. This is the word of our God. Please stand. Grace, mercy, and peace belong to all of you, from God, your Heavenly Father, and from your Lord, your Savior, Jesus, Christ the King. To one degree or another, every one of us is a people pleaser, right? I'm not saying everyone's completely a people pleaser, pleaser, but if we're all honest with ourselves, there are people in our lives that we want to be sure that we please by what we do, by what we say, by who we are. Sometimes that's family, friends, colleagues at work, bosses at work. And people go through great lengths just to try to please that person in their life that they are desperate to please. Or maybe those groups in their lives that they're desperate to please. There's a reason why it's a common storyline in TV for a guy to lose his job and yet lie about it to those closest to him because he doesn't want them to think any less of him. So he keeps putting on airs as if he still has employment, maybe even keeping the schedule that he had when he was at work, leaving home, spending the day at coffee shops, bars, or maybe even pounding the pavement to look for a new job before he tells his loved ones, his friends, that he's lost his job because he wants them to see him as successful, as someone worthy of their affection and their praise. The college kid goes away from home for the first time and doesn't know exactly what to do with the level of freedom that he or she now has and spends more time than they should hanging out with friends, playing video games, sleeping in, and the grades tank. But they go home for Thanksgiving for maybe the first time going home since college began, and they pretend like everything's perfectly fine. But come the end of the semester, their grades would prove otherwise, but because they're now an adult, they don't have to share that news with mom and dad until maybe it's a little bit too late. This deception comes about from that desire to be a people pleaser. And people play that deception game with more than just the people in their lives. People do... Sometimes we, very often we, even though we know we shouldn't, think we can play that game with God. After all, that's how just about every religion works. Trying to be a higher power pleaser, a God pleaser. Maybe in thinking that we could hide certain things about ourselves from God that we, we know he wouldn't approve of. But scriptures clearly tell us that, well, oh God sees all, knows all. He, he sees right through to our very hearts and minds. And yet, religions the world over, 
are all about balancing the scales, trying to do just enough to please God, to appease karmic justice, to attain a better position in the next life, whatever. And that way of thinking even makes its way into Christianity. When the Apostle Paul wrote the book of Colossians, he's writing against false teachings. And one of the false teachings that he seems to be writing against is this thought that Christianity has to move past Jesus. That there is still this effort on what you have to do to please God, to become welcomed by God. And yet Paul wastes very little ink in this letter that he writes to these Christians to make them understand that you, you can never move past Jesus. You can never move past the fact that you have a king who made you right with God. And in fact, just the verse ahead of our selection for this morning, Paul writes this about God the Father and what he has done for us. He says, The Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. He's saying the Father has qualified you. In other words, saying it's not your efforts that make you right with God. If you want to be a God pleaser, if you want to be able to look at your life, or have God look at your life and, say, and have God say that he was pleased by it, it's not something that you do to get that approval from God. It has to be done to you. God has to qualify you, and that's what this section on Christ the King Sunday is all about. How God went about qualifying you for his kingdom, for his wonderful light. And this is something we still need to get straight in our heads. Because otherwise, we can be tempted to think, well, I've been brought into the Christian faith. I, Jesus has made me a Christian. But shouldn't I strive to be an even better Christian? Isn't there a next level? Isn't there always something more? And in doing so, some people think they have to move past Jesus. That this Jesus stuff, that he died for your sins, well, that's what gets you into the church. But we all got, always got to climb that rung a little bit higher. But how is it that God was pleased with us? Let's get back to that and let's make that the focus. Let, let's see how God was pleased with us and let's remind ourselves that it's never about our own effort. The purpose of Christianity is not, is not to exalt the self, is not to focus on the Christian and what we do. It's not to build a, a list of accomplishments that we can see. See, God, who should be pleased by that? The Christian life to which we have brought in is always to bring glory, praise, and honor to the Christ who accomplished what was necessary. Because God was pleased not by our own actions but was pleased to reveal himself through his son. That's what pleased God. What pleased God was not this cosmic display of his almighty power. In fact, his creative work was done before the eyes of no one that is alive or was alive. He created everything and then created man and woman, Adam and Eve, and quickly they fell, and it didn't take very long for God to establish this plan that would please him, to send his son, born of the woman, born under law, to redeem those under law, to reveal his love to us by rescuing us from the dominion of darkness. And he did this by sending his son, who is the invisible image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, invisible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. All things have been created through him and for him. God the Son. 
the eternally begotten Son, the one who always was and always will be, the one through whom and for whom everything was made, was the one who, who came into this world, was the one who revealed God and revealed him most clearly. God had been sending his prophets who were revealing God's love through the promise of the Son yet to come. The one who was born in time and yet in eternity was forever begotten by God the Father. The one who slams together eternity and this creation in his own person. So that God's love would be made known. This is what pleases God. Not trying to see us get better progressively until maybe we one day would attain perfection with some future offspring of our own that had eventually just gotten rid of sin from the bloodline. That would never happen. And so God sent his son, the very one who was the word, of, the word that spoke and everything came into being. And that Jesus is who pleases God. At Jesus' baptism, the Holy Spirit descending, the voice of God the Father, this is my Son whom I am well pleased with. Again, at his transfiguration, God the Father voicing his approval over his son and over all that he was accomplishing because it would bring us back to him. When we try to please God, be God pleasers by our own actions, we are in a very real way saying, Jesus, Thank you, but move over a little bit. Let me try and gain some brownie points with God the Father, and let me try and make my way my way into heaven. You maybe got you gave me a running start, but I'll, I'll finish it from here, and that leads to failure. That leads ultimately to hell. That's why th this this truth that God qualified us through his actions needs to be highlighted all the more. Needs to be highlighted every week. We need to be reminded of this every day. We need to be brought back to our baptisms every morning. Start our day in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit being reminded that he qualified us. He made us his own children. He brought us into the family. Because it pleased God to make peace with us through his son. Jesus was a great teacher. He, he revealed the, the spirit in ways that the rabbis, the other teachers of his day, could not do. And people were amazed at his teaching. And the spirit was working in the hearts of his believers and his disciples. And it enabled them to do great things for God. To do things that were empowered by their faith. And God still does that. I don't want you to get the thought that I am telling you that you can never please God with your Christian life right now as you deal with family and friends, as you get ready maybe to deal with family and friends that you don't necessarily get along with at the dinner table on Thanksgiving. The lives you live in Christian faith, they do please God, but they do not qualify you for God's pleasure. They do not qualify you to, be, to enter into heaven. The lives you live as Christians that please God, you have that ability to please God by virtue of the faith that God gave you, the Spirit working through you and building that faith and helping you say no to sin all the more. But your ability to now please God by virtue of the faith we have 
comes from the fact that you have been qualified for God's family, that you have been led into the family of believers. And that faith all hangs on the fact that God made peace with us through his son, the one for whom all things were made and through whom all things were made, allowed himself to be taken to a cross, as we saw in our gospel lesson for today, to be nailed to a, that wooden tree and hung up so that all people would look up to him. And at that time they were mocking him, but all people would eventually look up and see that, well, this is God's best display of love. The assurance that Jesus was able to give to that criminal who was defending him, hanging next to him, is the very same assurance that you and I can have. That criminal didn't have any time to try to rack up some good works that he could present before God the Father and say, see, I am worthy. And yet, what did Jesus say? Today, today you will be with me in paradise. This pleased God. Because Jesus' sacrifice paid for that criminal's sins, paid for your sins, paid for my sins, paid for the sins of of all of the world who had lived before his crucifixion and who would live after his crucifixion. And the eyes that look on that event with faith receive the benefit of what our Savior has done for us. That is what qualifies us. That is why God looks down at his church and he is pleased the church of which Christ is the head the church of which Christ is in control Christ has supremacy over all things and so why would we think that we can move past him when you think surely there has to be something other than Christ and him crucified Surely there has to be some other pointer that I need for for my life that that will help me move past these basics. But these are, are more than just basics. We proclaim Christ and him crucified because that's the only reason why we have hope. That's the only reason why that God can can look at his church and say that he is pleased with us because Christ is our head and he is the one in control. Yes, in the church we receive helpful pointers for Christian living. But let those never overshadow the news of why it is that God is pleased with us. Let us never let that overshadow our celebrations of Christ the King, the one who died for us and rose again, assuring assuring us of God's pleasure. Amen.